Hands feed us. They keep us clean. Get us where we need to go. But these hands are also able to create the finest silk brocade in the world. Lighter than the clouds and more expensive than gold, it's called Yumjin Brocade. They belong to the most skilled Yumjin weaver on the planet. More of an artist than a craftsman, he was chosen by the government of China as the national heir to this ancient art form. His name is Zhou Shuangzi. For 36 years, Master Zhou has been coming to this workshop, where he is met by the clacking of looms and bright spools of silk strewn on the shelves. Returning every day to his loom to weave thousand-year-old patterns into the colorful silk. Describe your relationship with Yunjin. Yunjin. 还要需要这个好多的这种经验，直到现在我已经干了将近四十年，而且我到现在我还在不断的在学习，越干越觉得这个里面好多艺术上的东西哦，太美了，所以说它就深深的吸引了我。Yunjin is the highest form of silk weaving. In Chinese, Yun means cloud, and Jin brocade. An appropriate name since it produces brocade as light and soft as a cloud. Even today, the airy texture and patterns can't be replicated with a computer. Literally every step of the process is still done by hand, the same way it was done almost 2,000 years ago. What is it that makes Yunjin so valuable? Yunjin is very complex. 那么要耗费好，嗯，耗费的工时就是人工是相当大的，而且呢，它还用了一些珍贵的一种材料，金银，包括一些彩线。那么最高档的还用孔雀的羽毛，因为是皇帝嘛，他是不惜工本的，他用
feels and why it's happening. Master Zhou lives and works in Nanjing, the city that originally founded Eugene Brocade almost 2,000 years ago. Nanjing is located three hours northwest of Shanghai, right in the middle of one of China's busiest trade routes. The Qinghuai meets one of the longest rivers in China, the Yangtze, in the heart of Nanjing, making this city a major center of commerce in China for more than 2,000 years. Throughout the city, modern buildings rub elbows with ancient historical sites, both jostling for a place in Nanjing's vibrant cityscape. This is the entryway to the Nanjing Brocade Research Institute. It was built in the traditional style, which reflects the mission here, to preserve one of China's oldest traditional handicrafts. The Brocade Institute was founded in 1957 to revive and develop the art of weaving Eugene. Currently, the institute employs 450 passionate people, and most of them work in the direct production of Yunjin. The institute houses more than 100 active looms, with a growing staff of 200 weavers. And there are 100 more artists in the design department. UNESCO, or the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, protects cultural diversity around the world with its prestigious cultural heritage lists. The lists offer instant credibility and global recognition to the items included. After a long application process, Yunjin Brocade was added in 2009. Just looking at a piece of Yunjin, what is it about it that makes it so striking to you? Well, I think it's, it's the, the mastership and, and especially if, if you take account of the time invested to, to make it, if you really think about it, that you see time uh, captured in, in, in a piece of, of fabric and, and I think that's a fascinating idea. The end product is, is marvelous but also the process is very interesting, it has a very long-standing history. I think it works not only in the country itself but also on an international scale. If something has done the representative list of, of intangible cultural heritage of humanity then the whole world should take responsibility for this to devote attention to it and to protect it. Long before Yunjin gained global status through UNESCO, Master Zhou was hard at work perfecting and preserving this art form. Bogazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigazigaz
Then the person below, called the weaver, has to put all the right colors in all the right places to create the design. So the weaver has to play all the right notes. Incredibly, the weaver places the colors into the pattern by memory. And even more impressive, he improvises according to his artistic eye. The mark of a true master? Patterns like this, where the weaver changes colors within a single pattern on the fly. Here, the boy's clothing and the lotus flower change color with each repetition in the pattern. To achieve perfection, the weaving teams have to work seamlessly together for hours on end. It's such an intimate relationship, many of the best teams are actually family, siblings, or spouses. After years together, they often work with little or no spoken communication at all. Even with two people working perfectly in sync, 10 hours straight, they can only create about two inches of pattern a day. That's just this much, giving rise to the saying, an inch of brocade is worth an ounce of gold. Eugene's long history began in the year 417, when the later Qin Dynasty was defeated in a war and the Eastern Jin Dynasty set up shop in Nanjing. The victorious emperor brought the best craftsmen from across the country to the city, where a booming brocade industry was born along the banks of the Qinghuai River. It flourished for over 200 years until the dynasty was overthrown. With the lack of royal demand, Yunjin came to a standstill for 600 years and was nearly lost. But Yunjin was saved by an unlikely hero, a giant stone wall. This gate made the city so safe, the emperor of the Ming Dynasty actually moved his whole court here and made Nanjing the capital of China. With the center of China once again in Nanjing, the silk brocade industry was revived, growing in both skill and size. Here along the Qinghuai River today, you can hear the hustle and bustle of shops and restaurants. But imagine what it was like more than 200 years ago during the peak of Yinjin production, when the clacking of more than 30,000 looms could be heard echoing along the riverbanks here day and night. When the dynasties ended and the People's Republic of China began in 1949, it would have been easy for a royal craft like Yunjin to die out. During the transition, it shrunk to just four looms. This is the Brocade Museum located inside the Research Institute. It was founded to educate visitors about the rich history of Yunjin. But more importantly, it also houses some of the Institute's most significant artifacts, recreations of ancient Yunjin. While it might sound unnecessary at first, recreating ancient silk artifacts is actually one of the most critical responsibilities of the Institute. Recreating the ancient pieces is such an involved, time-consuming process why is it such important work? This Yunjin is actually a very high value Because in this country's development in our country, it's a very high value of the value of the value. So to show our country's value of the value of the value, we need to understand the value of the value of the value of the one of the most challenging reproductions was the silken robe dating back to the Han Dynasty, around 100 BCE. Made of such fine silk, even at 7 feet long, it weighs less than 2 ounces, and when it's balled up, it's the size of an egg. Since no modern silk was light enough for the reproduction, Master Cho and his team had to wait while silkworms were specifically bred to produce a lighter thread. It took more than 13 years of research to successfully duplicate this 2,000-year-old robe. This robe is decorated with eight golden dragons, five in the front, three in the back. The most powerful number in Chinese culture is nine, the highest you can go before you get to double digits. So the emperor often wore robes with 
eight dragons, implying that the ninth, most perfect dragon, was himself. He was so powerful, it was illegal to look him in the eyes. The dragon on his chest was facing outwards so subjects could address the dragon without offending the emperor. These encoded patterns extended to the royal court as well. High-ranking officials would wear a square emblem depicting various animals, like an eagle, tiger, or lion, each animal signifying their rank. The images woven into the pattern represent timeless wishes for blessings like luck, happiness, and health. For example, in this piece of Yunjin, the two fish represent abundance, the pomegranate, a symbol of fertility, and the peach is for longevity. A common theme is happiness. Often the character for happiness, she, is woven directly into the pattern. Bats are lucky because the Chinese word for bat, fu, sounds similar to the word for luck, fu. One of the most frequent symbols for luck? Clouds, because unlike angel wings in Western culture, in the East, people ride to heaven on a cloud. From the number of claws on a dragon to the type of flower on a vine, everything in Yunjin has a meaning. To create these intricate silk patterns, you need the finest silk, and a lot of it. The silk comes from cocoons like this. A handful this size will get you one thread. It takes 11,000 threads to set up a loom like this. That means to fully thread a loom, it takes 100,000 silk cocoons. That's enough to fill a Volkswagen Beetle. In ancient times, all that silk came into Nanjing on river boats. Today, the silk comes in on trucks, but the river still plays a key role in the production of Yunjin. The rivers are the lifeblood of this city and are also essential for the production of Yunjin. There's an enzyme found only in these waters that's used to ensure the vivid colors of the silk. This means that the process of Yunjin cannot be recreated anywhere else in the world. To keep all these bright colors straight, the silk comes here, to a small workshop behind the Institute. You can think of this room as the Grand Central Station of Silk. This is where the weavers come to choose their colors, and they have more than 800 shades to choose from. During peak times, this facility goes through up to a ton of silk every month. Weaving Yunjin requires three main procedures. First, designing the pattern. Second, knotting the pattern. We'll explain that later. And finally, weaving. Almost 40% of the time it takes to make a piece of Yunjin is spent in the design and preparation phase. The design process is run by Master Guo Jun, a 40-year veteran designer. He's responsible for all of the work that happens before the weaving begins, including the creation of new Yunjin designs. How is it that you come up with your own new designs? We need to find a design, a design that has not been presented in the past. We need to make a design, a design, and use them to show them. This is very important. In the past, we have a lot of designs in the past. We have a lot of designs in the past. We have a lot of designs in the past. 过去都是一些著名的大家，那么我们现在在承接这个设计工作当中呢，我们就要能够表现出一一种一种很有皇皇家的这种气氛。那么这个作为图案来说呢，也就是说显得更加高贵。To preserve the ancient patterns, the team begins with a life-sized print of the design. This is a 300-year-old piece of brocade depicting a Buddhist scene with more than 370 characters. Every detail must be carefully traced, down to the strands of hair on a head or ripples in the pond. It took seven designers two months to complete the tracing of this design. To make sure the pattern is perfect, workers scan the completed tracing into a computer, where they inspect, smooth, and correct each line. It's the only computerized part of the entire Yunjin process and it can take up to six months. With months of work already invested, 
The completed and perfected pattern still has to be transferred to the loom. To do that, they use this. Though at first glance it looks like a tangled mess, it's actually one of the most critical parts of the design phase, called knotting. The knotting process essentially prepares the pattern for the weaver. The process starts here, where the worker studies the pattern and then pulls up the right threads for each color in each line. Then these bamboo placeholders are shuttled all the way down here, where every part of the pattern is saved using cotton threads. Encoding a design like this takes an average of six months to complete. The more complicated or colorful the pattern, the more information to be stored, and the longer the series of knotting becomes. The most complicated pattern was more than 550 feet long. These long patterns can weigh up to 140 pounds, making the thread puller's job much more physically taxing. So the heavier the pattern, the more the thread puller is paid. Without the knotting process, the weaver would have to pick up the threads in each row at the loom. This would take an impossibly long time and compromise the accuracy of the final piece. Once the knots are transferred to the loom, the thread puller pulls on each string to create the pattern, leaving the weaver free to focus on placing the colors. The most unique color, a shimmering black made from peacock feathers. The peacock is a royal animal, expensive, rare, and showy. Even today, peacock feathers are used only in very important and costly patterns. Its multicolored feathers are hand spun around a core of green silk, creating a dark thread that changes color in the light. When they're woven into fabric, peacock feathers make a lavish, velvet-like texture, something the ancient emperors loved. But the royal taste took luxury even further when they began to weave solid gold into the royal patterns. Gold weaving is a tradition that began 800 years ago when the Mongolians conquered central China and started decorating their uniforms with threads of gold from their newly won gold mines. The Ming Dynasty then blended the gold weaving techniques from the north with the colorful silk weaving of the south, giving Yunjin a luxury and richness unparalleled in the world. All that gold thread is made about an hour away from the institute at the Nanjing General Gold Thread Factory. The process is so specialized, making just this much gold thread takes more than half a month. First, the gold must be rolled out and cut into small pieces. Then pounded, thinner than silk. Thousands of years ago, the gold was hammered flat by hand, taking 50,000 blows for each piece. Today, workers follow the same ancient hammering patterns to get the gold so thin it can float on air. Once the gold is transferred to the thread workshop, it's taken over by a two-person team with more than 50 years of experience. They make a very difficult skill look easy. After drying overnight and a quick polish, it's off to be sliced. Every thread is hand cut using this massive ax. It's an incredibly skilled job resulting in threads that can be used directly in the weaving or they can be wound around silk thread to form a shining bobbin of gold. Weavers lay the gold thread into the pattern with a long stick. The back of the thread is a dull red color from the mud mixture so the final golden pattern can only be seen when the piece is complete. To bridge the gap between past and present, artists are not only weaving centuries-old traditional designs like this one, but also more contemporary cutting-edge designs like this one. Follow me to take a look at just how much the style of the wardrobe has changed with the times as well to meet the shifting demands of the next generation. This striking dress is a fine example of how traditional brocade is now being incorporated into contemporary fashion. The shop holds a huge array of items, from a $20 tie to a million dollar wall hanging. 
The city itself is also playing a critical role in Yunjin's future. Yunjin is so important to Nanjing, the city created an opera about it to celebrate this ancient art form. We're here at a dress rehearsal now. Take it away, ladies. <laughs> In the opera, a young weaver and her royal client fall in love. He can't marry a lowly weaver, but she loves Yunjin too much to give it up for him, and they're separated in the end. Throughout the performance, the complex process of Yunjin is explained, presenting this art form to hundreds of people for the first time. What is your vision for the future of Yunjin? For me, because I was from a young age, I was working on this. My life, my life, all of this is in this world. So I think that at the moment, it's according to all kinds of ways. It's very good because everyone has increased. You don't know who you are. 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 国家发展有有能力做这个事儿，那么我觉得呢，就是云锦呢，虽然这个责任重大，困难也也不少，但是我对它的前景充满了希望。Despite all the hurdles of the centuries past, this colorful tradition is exceeding expectations through the hard work of the Brocade Institute and the hands of Master Joe.